Hi, this is Angela G from No Longer Lukewarm for Red Hot Christians and Wannabes. These videos are for those of you who like to listen while you're maybe doing something else. Uh, for those of you who like to read my blogs, you can find that link in the description box below. So this one is called A Dream of Correction and Warning for the Church. John 20, 27 says that God's people hear his voice. One of the ways God speaks in these last days is through dreams. Of course, not every dream is from God. The key is confirmation. First, does the Holy Spirit within you bear witness? Second, does the message agree with the Bible? And finally, are other Christians hearing the same things when God speaks to them? Last Sunday, I had a dream that was confirmed in all three ways. It's a correction and a warning for the church that we must heed, both for our own safety and to be pleasing to God. I had the dream last Sunday, January 5th, 2020. First, I woke up around 7.30 a.m. with a terrible feeling that something was just not right. I asked the Lord to speak to me and went right back to sleep and had a dream. The dream. In my dream, we were all waiting for the baby to poop. We knew that when it happened, it would be massive. There would be so much that it could even explode out of the diaper and get onto the walls. The baby was lying on the bed, completely naked. We hadn't even put on the diaper yet. I leaned over to its face and kissed and snuggled it. I pulled back and the baby said, too much. Again, I leaned over and kissed and snuggled it. Again, the baby said, too much. This happened two or three times. Then the baby started to poop. There was just a little at first and I got on the bedspread. I picked it up and held, held it over a nearby towel to try to lessen the damage. The poop just came coming and coming. Just then I remembered that someone else was with me. It was a female family member whom I know to be unsaved. I wondered, not without annoyance, why this person wasn't doing more to help me. It was her baby more than it was mine. End of dream. The first confirmation. When I woke up the second time, about an hour later, I wondered if the dream might be from God. First of all, I had asked for him to speak, and then right after I went into REM sleep. Second, anytime something happens more than once in a dream, it's a signal to pay attention. I prayed and asked God if it was from him. Almost immediately, I had the thought that the baby represented the world. Then I went to church. When I got to church, the pastor started first thing by letting us know that he had had that same feeling that morning very heavily that something was not right. He preached a message about how we need to get closer to God than we ever had before and keep our focus on him. Interpretation, the setup. After church, I was still praying about the interpretation and I came up with most of it at that time. Most Christians in the remnant community are well aware that danger is coming. Modern watchmen take Ezekiel 33.6 very seriously, and they've been warning us for years that the end-time beast is about to rise. Before the new system can come up, however, the old system must come down. That means wars, economic collapse, general chaos, and even Christian persecution. People know and speak about it as a time when the poop hits the fan. S-H-T-F. In my dream, we were waiting for said poop. We were afraid of it getting on the walls, even with a diaper on. I believe that speaks to the many Christians who feel that even if they do prepare as best they can, whether physically with food or water, and even precious metals, or mentally by learning skills uh, for doing things without electricity, etc., their preparations will simply not be enough. They feel overwhelmed at the whole idea of prepping for disaster. Interpretation. The baby. The baby was naked on a bed. The baby is the current world. The Bible, In the Bible, nakedness is connected to sin and shame. When nakedness is revealed, that indicates a time of judgment. Ezekiel 16.36 speaks about Israel being uncovered before God. Because of idolatry and child sacrifice, Israel was judged. But it sure sounds a whole lot like the whole world right now. Ezekiel 16.36 Thus says the Lord God, because your filthiness was poured out and your nakedness uncovered in your harlotry with your lovers and with all your abominable items and because of the blood of your children, which you gave to them. I hadn't even put the baby's diaper on. Christians are told to be clothed with Christ in Galatians 3.27. For as many of you as are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And those who are associated with him in the Bible are always found clothed in pure white linen. Before modern plastic diapers, babies were covered with sections of cloth made from white cotton or linen. I believe this represents the idea that some Christians today are living lives like the world. Sin and shame are evident, but the covering of Jesus Christ is missing. In my dream, I was worried that even with the diaper, the poop could explode out and get onto the walls. This speaks to the worry or fear that some Christians experience when they think about the coming hard times. But the Bible tells us not to fear, but to trust. Philippians 4, verses 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Interpretation. Snuggling the baby. 
I snuggled the baby's face. I believe strongly that this means that many Christians today are too focused on the pleasures of this world, overwhelmed by the prospect of the coming disaster, unsure what to do, and tired of the years and years of warnings. Some have simply given up on worrying about it. Instead, they focus their time or efforts on pursuing things that bring them pleasure and take their minds off the coming mess. But Galatians 6, 9 tells us to persevere. Galatians 6, 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The baby said, too much. I believe that this is a chastisement, a correction from God. He's letting us know that we are still too much a part of the world. We're too invested and too involved in playing with the fun parts of the world, not nearly serious enough about preparing for the big mess that will come from it. Interpretation. Poop on the bed and a towel. The baby pooped on the bedspread. I think this represents the beginning of a time when trouble hits. There was just a little at first, but when I noticed it, I reacted immediately. I think the bed or bedspread represents larger damage. Maybe this means the kickoff event will come with a high price for those who are uncovered. If the baby had been covered with a diaper, covered with Christ, the larger damage could have been avoided. I picked the baby up and held it over a towel. I think this represents the things we will do to try to survive and get through when the really bad things start, hap start happening. Without the covering of Christ, we'll be on our own to find a way to lessen the impact of the hard times that will be upon us. If the baby had been wearing a diaper, we might still have needed a towel, but we could have avoided the larger damage of the bedspread, and there would have been a lot less mess to clean up. Interpretation The Unsaved Family Member I expected more help from my family member. To be honest, I prayed and prayed about this part, even asking close friends what they thought this meant. I didn't get any answers other than the definite idea that I shouldn't expect much help from those who are not saved. It wasn't until I was listening to a YouTube video this week that I received both another confirmation of the dream as well as a better idea of what this part meant. I said, this is more her baby than it was mine. I think this statement confirms the interpretation of the baby as the world and reminds us that as Christians, this world is not our home. We are in it, but we are not of it. We must always remember that and keep our minds focused on living with eternity in mind. A confirmation and the last piece of the puzzle. A Minute to Midnight is a terrific YouTube ministry. This week I listened to Tony's show titled Mike It on Pro Preparedness Spotlight on Very Important Signs at Start 2020. The whole show really was a confirmation that we need to be preparing for what is coming instead of spending our time in pursuit of the world. First, we must put on Christ as our main covering. Then we must prepare as best we can physically, mentally, and emotionally. Near the end of the interview, Mike mentioned something that gave me the last bit of the interpretation as to what my unsaved family member meant. He said, Christians are really going to have to rely on one another during these times. He spoke of finding like-minded Christians to prepare with in your area. In the dream, I couldn't depend on someone from this world for much help, even a close family member. I think this means that we must seek out believers near us for help and support in these last days. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Those who have the Spirit of God will be our best resource for help and support, because we all have the same goals, to glorify God and to love His people. The Correction and the Warning I believe this dream is a correction to virtually every one of us. We need to stop focusing on the world and get serious about preparing for what is coming. Most importantly, we must make sure that we have put on Christ as our covering by giving ourselves to Him completely and listening when He convicts us about our behavior. We must seek our local Christian connections for both support now, for support both now and when hard times hit. It's also a warning to those who resist the Holy Spirit's correction and prompting to prepare. Proverbs 27.12 says, A prudent man foresees evil and hides himself. The, pistol, the simple pass on and are punished. As Western Christians, we are used to living very convenient, comfortable lives. We have no idea what it will be like to live without internet and stocked grocery stores, much less electricity or running water. Jesus can protect us from a lot of things that are coming, but God's ways are not our ways. We may have to go through some things to fulfill our calling and lead others to Him. He knows what's coming and what He will require of us, we have to listen when he warns us to focus and prepare.